Hello everyone, uh, today we're going to be going over an example problem that pertains to utilizing the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, so the example problem that we're going to be studying in this, in this video is that we have a piston cylinder assembly in which we have some mass M of gas present within our cylinder that's at, initially at some pressure P1 at state 1. Now our piston cylinder assembly undergoes a polytropic process that goes like PV to the 1.4 is equal to a constant to a state 2 in which we know the pressure P2, the volume V2, and the mass M, which remains constant between both states since we have a closed system. Now we also know that we have a change in specific internal energy of 70 kilojoules per kilogram between our states 1 and state 2. So I've gone ahead already and listed all of the, the knowns that we have in our problem. Listed, they're listed on the, the left hand side. So we know P1, we know P2, we know V2, we know our mass M, we also know the change in specific internal energy, which is 70 kilojoules per kilogram. Now, the, pro the, the problem in itself also tells us that we can uh, neglect the change in kinetic energy and the change in potential energy, which will uh, assist us when we go ahead and expand the first law of thermodynamics. Now, this problem in itself is asking us to find the heat transfer, Q, in kilojoules for our given system. So let's go ahead and, and start solving this problem. Okay, so in these types of problems, the first thing that I like to do is immediately write down the first law of thermodynamics. So we have the change in energy of our system is equal to, and I'm going to go ahead and expand this term, so we have the change in internal energy plus the change in our kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy <coughs> is equal to heat minus work. Now in the assumptions we've we we're already told that we can go ahead and neglect the kinetic and potential energy and therefore we can just go ahead and cross these terms out. We don't have to pay attention to them. So all we're left with is the change in internal energy is equal to Q minus W. So our heat minus work. So in rewriting this for our heat transfer Q we see that Q is just going to be equal to our change in internal energy plus our boundary work, W. So this is the expression that we're going to want to solve for our problem to find the heat transfer for our given system. So first things first, let's go ahead and start off by solving for the change in internal energy because we already know quite a bit about this. So in the problem statement, we're actually given the change in specific internal energy. Now if you go back and recall the definition of specific internal energy relative to internal energy, we can rewrite that in terms of in, in terms of a changed form. So we see that the change in specific internal energy is actually just equal to the change in internal energy divided by mass. Now we can rewrite this as the change in internal energy is equal to mass times the change in specific, let me rewrite that, w, that u. So we have that our change in internal energy is equal to mass times our change in specific internal energy. So we can go ahead and uh, plug in our known, so we get 0 0.2 kilograms times our change in, in, uh, our change in specific internal energy, which is going to be our 70 kilojoules per kilogram. And this gives us 14 kilojoules. So we already know our change in internal energy. And therefore, the only thing that we need to do now is to find our boundary work for our problem in order to, in order to solve for our key transfer for the given system. So, step number three. What is our boundary work, W? So the problem tells us that it undergoes a polytropic process. And as a result of just knowing that we have an, a polytropic process, we know precisely what, uh, what expression we need to use in order to solve for our boundary work. So we know that work is equal to P2, V2 minus P1, V1, divided by 1 minus N for a polytropic process, where N does not equal 1. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and do a tally on all of the terms within our expression for work and see which ones we know versus which ones we don't know. So we know P2, check. We know V2, check. We know P1, check. We also know our uh, polytropic exponent n, so that's a check there. But we do not know our initial volume at state 1. So we have to find out what this is. So our step number 4 is going to be what is our volume at state 1. Now we can solve for this by means of knowing that we have a polytropic process between states 1 and state 2. That's how we go from state 1 to state 2 is by means of this polytropic process. And therefore, we can write that P1, V1 to the n is equal to some constant, and P2, V2 to the n has to equal this exact same constant, and therefore we can set these two expressions equal to one another. And we can use this as a means to figure out what V1 is for our system. So let's go ahead and rearrange this. So we get V1 is equal to V2 times a ratio of our pressures, P2 divided by P1, all to the 1 divided by N. So let's go ahead and write in our known values. So we know our volume. We know our pressures, so we have 850,000 pascal divided by 250,000 pascal divided by, or uh, 2b1 divided by 1.4. And what this tells us is that our initial, our, our initial state volume is 0 0.06 cubic meters. Okay, so now we know our initial state volume, so our volume at state 1, and therefore we, have, we know everything inside of our boundary work expression. So let's go ahead and solve for our boundary work. So step number 5. So our boundary work is P2, V2 minus P1, V1 divided by 1 minus n. So let's go ahead and plug in all of our known values. So we have our pressure and our volume at state 2. We also have our initial state uh, pressure and volume, so we have 250,000 pascal we also have our initial volume which we just solved for using uh, our polytropic process expressions and this is all divided by one minus our polytropic exponent, which is 1.4. So I'm plugging in all of this. What you end up getting is that we find out that our boundary work is minus 15,625 joules. Now note that we have a negative sign in front of our, in front of our boundary work. And what this tells us is that we have work being done to our system. We've defined our system as being the gas present within our piston cylinder and whoop, low battery. Um, <coughs> so, um, and this makes sense. This makes uh, physical sense with our given problem because we know that between states 1 and state 2 we have a decrease in volume and an increase in pressure and therefore our gases are actually just being compressed. We're pushing on the gases within our cylinder with the piston. And as a result, we're actually applying work onto the gases within our piston, and therefore er, uh, the gas present within our piston cylinder. And as a result of this, we expect 
for our work to have a negative sign because we are actually doing work onto our gas within our cylinder via the piston. Okay, so now that we know our boundary work, we also know our change in internal energy, and therefore now we can just go ahead and plug those into an expression that we derived using the first law of thermodynamics to find the heat transfer. So we have Q is equal to our change in internal energy plus work. So we get 14,000 joules minus 15,625 joules. And what this gives us is minus 1,625 joules. Now rewriting this in terms of kilojoules, we get minus 1.625 kilojoules, which is our final answer. And again, note that we have a negative sign for our heat transfer. And therefore, as a result of this, we know that we have heat leaving our system uh, for this particular problem. So we have 1.625 kilojoules of heat of uh, thermal energy leaving our system as a result of this process. So um, that is the, the solution in a, in a nutshell. Um, if you have any questions or concerns regarding the solution, uh, feel free to leave a, a comment below with a question and I'll uh, do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. Uh, thank, you very, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope this was a helpful video, and I will see you next time.